All right. Um, welcome everyone to the second day of the symposium. So I think yesterday we had uh, some good discussions on what model consistency was and uh, uh, as was pointed out, it's basically the process of ensuring that the learning environment and the prediction environment are consistent with each other. And that necessarily involves the output of the flow solver um, in the cost function, right? When uh, we are training the model. And one of the other benefits is because the uh, output of the cost function, uh, the, sorry, the output of the solver is what is used in the cost function. Uh, we can also work with very sparse data, right? Quantities like pressure, skin friction. We don't necessarily need field variables, but uh, field variables can also be used. So this morning we have, uh, in the first session, we have four talks and uh, these talks are focused on establishing model consistency or approaching model consistency using uh, so-called field inversion techniques. So in all of these talks, some field of discrepancies is being extracted using some amount of data. And it has a national lab flavor. Um, the first talk is from Onera. The second talk, the speaker did his PhD in Onera. And then we have a talk from DLR and NASA. All right. Um, and again, as far as logistics go, if you have a question, the best place to raise it is in the Q&A section. And uh, the panelists can get to it whenever uh, uh, possible. All right, without much further ado, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let uh, Pedro uh, start his presentation. So hello everybody. I think now you can see my screen. So I'm gonna start, so my name is Pedro Volpiani and my colleagues and I, we work at Oneha. And I'm here today to talk about machine learning augmented turbulence modeling for run simulations of flows over periodic hills. So uh, we all know that run simulations, uh, they lack accuracy in many situations. Uh, for instance, when you have a diverse pressure gradient, large separations, curvatures, and so on. So this image I show you on the left, a DNS of a backward facing step flow. And on the right, we have the runs uh, with this Polarama has model. And we see that, for instance, in this situation, the runs over predict the separation length. And our goal is to try to fix this problem, uh, to fix the run solutions to get it closer to the DNS. And we're going to do this uh, by combining data-driven assimilation and machine learning. And in order to do that, we need um, high fidelity test cases reflecting critical physics and also a robust assimilation environment and machine learning strategy. So let me explain a little bit how the, our methodology works. So first we, we solve the exact equations, okay, here, uh, so, RE is the Navier-Stokes equations, and then UE is the exact solution. Then we solve the model equation. So in our case, it's the Renz equations. Then we perform a data simulation to correct discrepancies. So in order to do that, we need to include um, a parameter, a uh, flow field parameter um, in the model equations, and then minimize a cost function. Then we want to generalize this, this correction parameter and we're gonna build a neural network to construct the correction term as a, function, as a function of available flow quantities. And then we're gonna perform the, our run simulations using our neural network augmented turbulence model. So let's move on to our, to our case. So we're, to solve these runs equations, we're gonna use the freeframe solver. It's an open, solver, uh, open source uh, code. And the term that we want, that we're gonna need the, 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 the runs modeling is this term here. And we're using the uh, spalar Amaha's turbulence model, okay? And in the data simulation uh, process, we want to, we're gonna include 
a parameter that it's this FIDA that comes from data simulation. So basically, we know that our uncertainty comes from this term over here. And then we have this polar Omaha's uh, uh, term that's given by this uh, expression here, where we have the turbulent eddy viscosity here. And then we want to add a correction term. So it's a, a, a term that is correcting the Bolsonesque hypothesis. And during this data simulation procedure, we're going to minimize this cost function. So where uh, it's the difference between the simulated velocity and the reference velocity. And for this uh, reference velocity, we're going to take in, we're taking the data from two different groups, uh, Glorfeld and Chanella, and also the Kiao. So these are available in the literature. So, and why uh, did we choose to use this formulation? It's because in a previous study, from our, also from our group, at Toneha, we saw that if we added a volume forcing term in, in the momentum equations, uh, runs equations, we saw that uh, the optimization, they work really well in the days for um, massively separated flows. So in this case, it's the backward uh, facing step. My colleague, uh, Lucas Francisco is gonna tell a little bit uh, more about uh, this, this case. So basically the boosting S correction works better than the eddy viscosity correction. So as you can see here, uh, the cost function it decreases really well for this case and for the eddy viscosity, it just stagnates after uh, 10 to 12 um, iterations. And then you can see here that the streamwise, uh, the streamwise uh, velocity field. So in dash, it's the reference and then in uh, the solid is the data simulated, is the simulated uh, uh, field. And you see that for this case, you have a perfect collapse. Why for this, uh, for the eddy viscosity correction, uh, we don't have the same uh, result. So that's the reason why we're choosing this type of correction. So as you can see here for the periodic hill configuration, we have the DNS on top, the runs as far as in, in the middle. And then we see that uh, the retachment point is really um, over predicted by the runs. Uh, without any correction. And in the simulated case, we see that this retachment point and also all the, the flow field um, uh, is very close to the, to the reference uh, solution, to the top solution over here. And this was done by the case, by the Reynolds, by the periodic configuration at Reynolds 2800. And what is interesting about what we're doing is that if we take, um, the force in the x direction given by the dns at this at, at this reynolds number so basically this term is the is partial tau xj uh, partial xj and then you can compare with the sum of the force given by the spiral armors model and the assimilated force and you can see that it compares really well. We can see that both this total force computed from the DNS and the total force computed from runs, they are very similar, which means that we're actually doing something that is physical. So it's uh, very interesting from, from this point of view. Um, now let's move on to the uh, machine learning strategy. So uh, we use the PyTorch library, okay, to build our neural network. The input features, uh, we inspired our, 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 our input features from the work from Ling and Templeton and also from Vang and coworkers. But since uh, we're dealing with a force, so uh, in the momentum uh, equation, we also need to perform data augmentation to ensure um, rotational invariance. And this is uh, can be, um, relatively costly because uh, if compared to other to other studies but this is a very uh, important step to do to ensure that we're doing uh, to ensure uh, stability and then we'll have four uh, hidden layers with 80 neurons uh, each okay and then uh, two outputs so fx and fy and for the input features, I'm gonna talk a little bit uh, later. So what's the idea here? 
So we have four reference data for these four configurations. So periodic hill and four different Reynolds number. So the idea here is if I have only access to three, to three uh, DNS, am I able to predict a uh, fourth uh, configuration given that I know uh, the exact solution of three other cases? And so this would be like interpolation in Reynolds number, but you can also do an extrapolation in Reynolds number. And that's what I'm, uh, I'm, we try to do. And then if you go for the first scenario, so here I show you the, it's the interpolation in Reynolds number. So Reynolds number, it's 5,600. On top, we show the streamwise velocity and on bottom the vertical velocity. And then in black solid line, we have the DNS. And in green line, we have the DA, the, the simulated solution. You see that they are really on top of each other. So meaning that the uh, data simulation, it works uh, really well. And then in blue, we have this, the classical spider uh, runs uh, solution. And in red, we have our uh, run solution uh, augmented with the neural network, using our neural network. And we see that the result is really good. It, it compares really well between the neural network-based runs and the DNS for, 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 bo for, for both uh, images. And then if you go also, if you compare also the reattachment position, we see that it's really close to the DNS. Then now if you uh, use, uh, try to extrapolate in Reynolds number, we see that, so the red line and the black line, they both uh, agree very well, very well again, except on the top, uh, of, uh, on the top wall, then we have a, a small discrepancy. But concerning uh, this in, in the this recirculation uh, region, the result is really close to, to each other. So now we ask ourselves, OK, we have this uh, training data that were performed uh, in this red uh, profile. So it, can we try to extrapolate also in geometry? So if we use the, the training data that we did in the red profile, can I extrapolate it in the blue prof in the blue profile and the green profile? And that's what we did next. So here is for the short uh, a hill profile and here is for the longer. And we see that the neural network model also is able to predict very well uh, this, the, 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 the mean velocity profiles. So now I would like to uh, mention a little bit about uh, something that we did uh, with respect to the input features. So all the images that I showed was uh, we used the input features based on global quantities. So, and these global quantities that you used uh, were the ones used to make the, our code non-dimensional. So, and so that means that is the reference velocity and the hill, uh, it's uh, the, hill, the hill height. So uh, a reference uh, length, characteristic length. So this uh, choice of input features, they, um, they, they, make, they, they, they depend on the, on the family uh, of the configuration. So it was made for this type of configuration. So it, if you go to different uh, scenarios, then maybe you need to work this, this, the, this global quantities. But then we also tried on local quantities. So this is a more general uh, input features. And it's more like what, what we're used uh, to do uh, in the literature. And then, so, uh, and this is of course more generic than the previous one because we don't need to specify any global quantities. But we, we saw that doing, um, using the neural network based on global quantities, we had a very close uh, solution. So here we show the screen friction for the lower wall. And we see that it agrees very well with the DNS and the reattachment point is perfect, perfectly retrieven. And the neural network using local quantities, there is still some difference. We have, uh, of course, we do have an improvement, but it's not as perfect as the neural network using global quantities. So just to conclude, uh, in this work we used, we combined variational data simulation 
to infer a modeling correction from high fidelity data and machine learning uh, to construct the correction term as a function of available flow quantities. Then the final neural network contribution uh, is a boost nest correction in form of volume forcing term on the momentum equations. And we show that this uh, new uh, model were able to predict flows at different Reynolds numbers and different geometries. And we show that machine learning augment, augmented turbulence models could be used to improve CFD capabilities. And then we have here, uh, we, we just published this work. So if you're interested in, in more results or in more details, please go and, and see uh, our publication. And then uh, I, would, I would also like to thank the European project Hi-Fi Turb for um, supporting uh, this research and also for Cardiff for organizing this, this symposium. Thank you. If you have any questions, please let me know. All right. Thank you. Uh, there is already a question. Uh, in this specific case, uh, Paul Durbin is asking, what does data augmentation mean? Well, the augmentation is because when we augment is because since we're dealing with a vector, right? We're trying to learn a vector. To make sure that we have this uh, rotation invariance, we need to take uh, and rotate our, 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 our case. So our data, we need to perform multiple rotations in the data to ensure the, the rotation. So that's why it's uh, augmented. Yeah. So basically you take the same data and then you just rotate it. Uh, exactly. Or you do a mirror reflection, whatever it is, to fool the learning, uh, to fool the machine learning into thinking it seeing very different types of data, but it'll all be uh, from the same data set. All right. Um, are there other questions? Okay, there's a question from, uh, yeah, do you obtain, how do you obtain turbulence intensity with SA is, is the question. Uh, that, so we, we, we used, um, a definition uh yeah philip had given a definition like uh, 10 15 years ago or so exactly exactly we can do it uh, based on the turbulence and the viscosity yeah but it, it exactly, yeah. Extra, the exact expression it's in our article mm -hmm. All right so um i think we are a minute ahead of schedule which is great so thank you um, so yeah, I think if the next speaker, uh, if Lucas, you can start uh, sharing your screen. But thank you, Pedro. I think if there are other questions, you can ask on uh, in the Q and A. Of course, thank you. <laughs>